Okay, good morning, everyone. Uh, yeah, welcome to this class on uh, Equip the Supernatural Ministry. And today, and uh, getting to our session for today, I'll just pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time that you have given us. And Father, we pray that, Lord, you will give us the understanding we need, O oh God, to really walk in the things that you're calling us to walk in. Uh, Father, we ask for your blessing upon this, uh, upon this class, O oh God. And Father, we give you all the glory and honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 So um, in the last class, we talked about the fact that we have an invitation from Jesus to walk in the supernatural. We have seen how he asked for his disciples to go and um, uh, demonstrate the kingdom of God by healing people, by setting them free, by cleansing lepers. Uh, he also sent uh, 70 others. And then there is the Great Commission in which each one of us have been commissioned to go and do uh, the mighty works of God. We saw how uh, they noticed a man who is unnamed in the Bible who was doing these supernatural works, but Jesus never stopped. Um, that person and he told the disciples also not to stop that person because everyone who was uh, demonstrating the kingdom of God uh, from what Jesus said is that they were serving God and so we must not stop those who are serving God. Uh, we later on went ahead with the subject on sonship glory and we understood that Jesus walked on this earth in the glory that God gave him, which is the sonship glory. And uh, we also saw passages where Jesus prayed and asked the Father to give us that sonship glory. So today, every believer has the privilege of walking in the same sonship glory that Jesus had. And we've clarified it. You know, it's not that uh, we are trying to compare, uh, compete with Jesus. He is deity, of course. You know, he is God. And he had a different glory up in heaven. But when he walked the earth, he was able to do it in a powerful manner because of the sonship glory, which each believer carries. And there was also another question from us where um, uh, we asked if glory only means the sonship glory is only about the supernatural. And I shared that, uh, yes, a huge part of uh, the glory that we are talking about, the sonship glory, is the supernatural. Because in John chapter 2, when the miracle took place, John wrote and said, Jesus manifested his glory. So what does it mean? It means that the supernatural is included in that glory. And uh, we could even say that, uh, you know, the glory has to do uh, greatly with the supernatural because nowhere else there is this description regarding the glory of Jesus until the moment when the supernatural was manifested. Okay, So uh, our understanding is that God wants us also to demonstrate the sonship glory, which means he wants us to demonstrate the supernatural. Okay, in and through our lives. Uh, and we looked at the empowering of the Holy Spirit. When God calls us to do something, uh, we are uh, empowered and we are equipped to do it. That's why God is even asking us to do those things. Um, so uh, we have the anointing of the Holy Spirit, the same Holy Spirit who 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 did the miracles in uh, the ministry of Jesus is with us. And so we can expect the um, same power in our lives. And we also briefly talked about the authority which has been given to us. Now, having the power of the Holy Spirit is one matter. Uh, and also carrying authority. We said exousia, right? Uh, God gives us the authority and he says, now you will go and you will do greater works than what uh, Jesus himself has done. So as believers, we are carrying both the power of the Holy Spirit as well as the authority that God has given us to walk in the supernatural realm. So believers can demonstrate the same 
power of God as the Lord Jesus did 2000 years ago. And we can manifest the glory of God. The glory of God will reveal, you know, the grace, the truth and the power of God in and through our lives. So now we finally come to the keys that we need to discuss um, throughout our course. There are a total of uh, eight keys that we will discuss one by one. I'll read out the list first to all of us. First would be the understanding of the realm of the spirit. So that is the first key. Uh, the second one is faith. The third one is the power of the word. Fourth one, the renewed mind. Fifth one is the anointing of the spirit. Sixth is God's presence and glory. Seventh is proclamation and action. Eighth is persistence. So these are the keys that we would need to understand and begin to function in. So we'll go one by one uh, so that we can have some in-depth, uh, you know, um, like a hold on these subjects. So the first one is understanding the realm of the spirit. So all of us as believers uh, recognize that we live in this natural world, but there is a spiritual realm as well. Okay, So there is a spiritual reality. Now, not just us believers. I think there are so many people out there uh, who have not yet accepted Christ, but somewhere they may have experienced this spirit realm or, uh, um, you know, people who are part of the occult who uh, do experience, you know, the, the, um, the existence of um, beings or the power that comes from another realm. Even they would tell you that, yeah, it's true. There is the natural realm, but there is another realm, which is the spirit realm. For us as believers, um, we admit the existence of the spirit realm but we have to go one step ahead accepting that there is a spiritual realm is but normal many of us say yeah god is there angels are there power of god is there you know and uh, when we pray things happen so we only go that far but to say that uh, you know, from the spiritual, uh, from the natural realm, you know, there are there are uh, things that we can engage in, which will affect the spirit realm, and in turn, that spirit realm will affect us. Okay, so that understanding, uh, many of us may not have. Now, many of us may even have that understanding that, yes, there is this whole, um, you know, connection uh, and uh, things affect us from the spirit realm. But we as believers may not admit that it is possible that uh, the spiritual realm overrides the natural realm. Or in other words, uh, the spiritual realm can have an impact or a bearing on the natural realm in a powerful way. Now, that is something that we may not admit or we may not have thought about it or we may not even be concerned about the importance of that. Like the spirit, spiritual reality overriding or the spiritual reality impacting the natural reality. Okay, so I'll explain myself as we go further. Now, when things happen in the natural, as believers, if we just go with whatever is happening um, and we don't really depend on the word of God or the presence of the Holy Spirit, we are not, you know, showing that we accept uh, that the spiritual realm can actually influence us because we are like every other person who is just going about life, you know, the, uh, normally. But as a believer, when I know that uh, certain things that I do say uh, or believe can cause the impact of the spiritual realm on my life, then I'm really engaging 
in you know what exists and um, you know what god has made available okay so that is the most important thing for us as believers to recognize the spiritual realm and to uh, take up the position that we should in order for the spiritual realm to override the natural realm causing a change or an impact so um, things like let's say prayer uh, we may look at our city we may look at our nation and we can look we can list out uh, the many things that are not correct or crimes uh, or injustice and we can just say that oh, that's how things are yeah there is a god and you know their god is a god of justice but yeah these things are going on and uh, we can resign to that but if as a believer i understand that the spiritual realm can actually override the natural reality yes many things are wrong but when i am a believer i can pray so when i pray what happens the supernatural starts to affect the natural isn't it that's what the bible says we can pray for uh, our city we can pray for our leaders we can pray against uh, the crime that is taking place or uh, you know the things that are going wrong so as believers engaging the spirit realm to see a change or an impact is what is required so for me one key to flow in the supernatural is to in every circumstance to recognize what's happening in the natural is there a connection to what is happening now to the spirit realm if there is is there anything i can do to engage and see the power of that you know upon the natural realm so when i practice that then each time i can see the spiritual or the supernatural overriding the natural or let's say for example you know somebody is sick so we can pray uh, we can minister healing what is that the supernatural is overriding the natural or let's say you know there is um, uh, like a problematic situation uh, in someone's home uh, it may have to do with uh, some sort of uh, demonic influence so when i recognize that i have a sense that what i'm seeing is not just what exists there is more to it so in the spirit realm what is the connection right so you're being sensitive to the existence of the spirit realm and so then what do we do okay i sense that there is a demonic influence then we take charge of that we go against it in the name of jesus and we see the natural reality change there is a change in that particular uh, circumstance so this is what is important for a believer who wants to flow in the supernatural don't just admit that there is a spirit realm because that is only step 1 and that step 1 so many people do even unbelievers do that doesn't help much but to admit that there is a spirit realm and to understand how to engage the spirit realm to affect the natural realm not just affect override the natural realm that was the life of jesus isn't it so jesus always walked with the understanding or the reality of the spirit realm and he was ready to minister because he just knew how to engage the spirit realm and the natural realm so in a way um we can use the term amphibious uh when we talk about you know some uh, organisms creatures they live in the water and they also live on the land you know like frogs <laughs> yeah so they are am amphibians we call them but as believers we must be in the world but not off the world right we must be so in tune with the natural realities but at the same time be very sensitive to the spiritual realities because uh it's not like everything that's going on in the natural is is independent it's just happening on its own okay uh there are many things that are connected to the spiritual realm so though we are living a natural life to have the awareness of the spiritual realm is very important okay. 
Um, and, uh, you know, we could talk about so many examples uh, of this, but uh, I'll just move on. Uh, the life of Jesus itself is a great example of how uh, he lived on the earth, but at the same time, he was talking about the heavenly father. Uh, I, you know, the father, um, I saw the father do this, or uh, I heard the father. So he's in tune. Okay. Um, it, it's, it's something that we need to practice to be in the natural world, but to also be very much part of the spiritual world. And so when this happens, the supernatural will uh, become quite frequent. So when we encounter a crisis, maybe, you know, like uh, let's take the time when Jesus um, found that people were hungry and they needed to be fed food. It's a crisis. What do we do now? People are hungry, right? And uh, to find a solution, you know, anyway, God decided uh, that a miracle is the best solution for that moment. And because he knew that there is a spiritual realm, he was living in the awareness of the possibility of a miracle. And the miracle happened. So how did the crisis get solved? Not through a natural, logical solution, but through a supernatural solution. So even in our own lives, day to day, we face circumstances and we are thinking, ah, oh, what should I do? You know, bad news, uh, problem, uh, difficulty, challenge. What is the best solution? We can even trust God for miracles, right? And uh, uh, miracles take place if we are engaging. But if we are just going about, um, you know, in the normal way and we say, yeah, this is, let's just deal with it in the most natural way, you know, do a research and just find what are the three options that anyway exist. We'll just work out those, any one of those three options. But there can be a fourth option that comes from God. Maybe a word of wisdom you get in that moment. Okay, do this or speak to someone, call so and so, uh, right? So uh, when I am aware of the spiritual realm and I'm aware that I can engage the spiritual realm, uh, walking in the supernatural becomes, you know, really very common uh, to each of us. Okay, so uh, just pray and uh, yeah, trust God. So I'm uh, reminded of one example of last week. I think some of us here, we were going looking for a place. We needed a place, right, for um, uh, us here. Uh, and that afternoon, just before we went, uh, I was praying. I was like, okay, God, we are going to go and uh, we're looking for this place. So like, what should we do? It shouldn't be like we go and we waste hours of time and we don't find anything. And I was just having a quick lunch before going and it just came, that thing came to my spirit like, um, you know, uh, God is able to lead you to just that right place uh, so that you don't even have to look because he knows which one you're going to choose at the end anyhow, right? So he can just take you to that place. Why do you even want to go look around? I thought, yeah, interesting thought, you know, but uh, somewhere in my heart before I started the car, I said, yes, Lord, you can do it. I'm saying amen to it. You can do it. Uh, and I think some of us also went, right? So we went, we did look around a little bit, but then somehow we kind of zeroed in on a particular place and things just worked out. Uh, you know, we didn't even, uh, the whole exercise didn't take like four hours that I had, I had put down, okay, four, minimum four hours we have to go around. Uh, but I don't know. I mean, there have been times that we went looking for something and it took days and months. I'm still looking for <laughs> some places for other pro projects. But the point I'm making is, I realized these are everyday matters, okay? But we can be in tune with the Father and say, okay, God, what are you saying? What should we do? What am I sensing, right? And that day when we actually kind of went into that place, uh, I, I, you know, you can feel that connect of what you were sensing and what God is doing. And I was really in awe. Yes, God, you can do it. <laughs> you can take us to just one place and make it happen. Why not? That's a possibility. It may not be logical. Logic says you have to spend whatever X number of days and figure out. And But in the supernatural, it can happen in moments. It can happen in, you know, an hour. Uh, so to be aware of the supernatural, that is step one. But to really be sensitive 
and know how to engage the supernatural to bring that into the natural reality okay that is uh, a key for us to walk in the supernatural so uh, as we talk about the existence of these two realms what are some things that we must understand one thing is we must understand the greatness of god the greatness of god and have this strong belief that with god nothing shall be impossible otherwise we are limited to the solutions that the book offers us we are only limited yeah I'll, i'll just come to you so we are only limited maybe you can take the mic in the meantime uh, we are only limited to the solutions that you know uh, the natural mind can offer but when we know that god is so great it opens us up to a greater possibility right uh, so yeah knowing the greatness of god will help us uh, to Mm, like you know walk effectively between these two realms okay anand something you want to ask just uh, sorry to disturb you uh, when we are talking about the spiritual realm to natural realm, so uh, is there any key to how to be more sensitive for the holy spirit okay how to be more sensitive to the holy spirit um the way we improve our listening is by listening more isn't it that's the only way so um guess god is talking but ev- every day i need to ask the question like um what is god saying not just when i'm reading the bible you know like uh, when i'm driving or i'm just at my job or even like when i'm speaking to you all i'm thinking what is a new thing that i'm learning even as i'm speaking to you what is god saying what is god showing so i th- that is a posture of hearing anand okay so when you are in that posture of hearing what happens is you hear and uh, you you're trying to focus you're trying to hear from god all the time it just improves and improves and improves okay so to be in that posture is the starting point and then there are so many other things that we can talk about uh, something like even praying in tongues okay uh, it, it stirs up you can stir yourself up when you pray in tongues pray in the spirit um and, and i mean i don't know which scripture and verse to give you but i have practiced it and i have also heard others share the same thing with me saying you know you you pray more in the spirit and there are times when i've prayed more in the spirit that even let's say sunday service i'm ministering or something i just get words of knowledge it just get like pictures it just comes so much faster uh so yeah yeah most of the times i heard from you and uh, pastor jake so also like mm. when you say saying like when we are walking when we are when we are doing anything also we can hear from yeah, god yeah. so mostly if 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 you ask me <coughs> my personal experience if i'm doing worship or if i'm praying so i can hear and i can sense in my heart like if he want to say something and when you guys are you and uh, pa- pa- pastor jakes was telling like uh, when we are driving car mm. we used to feel that yes. when you are speaking we used yes. to feel that yes i mean i was thinking is is there any uh, level for sensitiveness like being more sensitive to holy spirit like uh, yeah see um it's like the way i look at it is like um uh you know like live by faith the just shall live by faith so live by faith means day to day when you know through the day through the night so when we are living like that it's like you're journeying with god in faith the way abraham did so it's just a journey you you should actually never cut off you should never cut off and it's not even a matter of sensitivity it's a matter of relationship you know uh because we need that relationship with uh, god to to really live our life so how can i tune out even if i don't have sensitivity to hear something i should i'll strain myself to hear so i don't know if i answered your question but yeah don't tune out that's my point hmm. but like uh, at the same time they hmm. will be like even it can be our own uh, thought but how Correct. can we be assured 
yeah that it's god who was uh, actually mm. speaking to us mm. it's what holy spirit is speaking to us yeah so uh, what can be the assurance that we can take correct see how do we hear from god by hearing okay each time when you you are trying to hear from god it just gets better and better and better uh, and in hebrews chapter 5 you know it it says i think hebrews 5 14 it says uh, that we exercise our senses by way of exercise of our senses we are we become more mature or capable to discern so discerning comes by practice so when my spirit hearing sense i am practicing it every day i am practicing it practicing it practicing it i just get quicker at knowing yeah this is god this is not god but for that i need to practice no yeah so what happens is we, we somewhere think that uh, okay we should hear from god when um, i need to find the right career or i am going to marry someone or oh, then only god speak to me speak to me god is speaking all the time so if i have familiarized myself day to day uh, then exercised my senses then it becomes so much easier for me to pick up even the big things right and of course the word of god is is another important thing uh, 1 john 5 7 it says like the word and the spirit agree so when i'm trying to become sensitive to the voice of the holy spirit i cannot eliminate the word because the word is very much in agreement with what the spirit is doing and saying right so the more i read the word uh, i am improving my chances of confirming what the father is saying so the word and listening to the spirit tuning into the spirit these are the two things okay yeah so i was just saying that the awareness of god's greatness is very important uh, because then what happens we will know that how we will ask the question what can god do in the situation logical answers are there logical solutions are there but even then god what do you want to do is there something new that you want to do okay because god is great and uh, god always works out of the box so maybe something amazing god can do in this uh, circumstance and situation so engage the greatness of god uh, and that really helps us um yeah, to walk in the supernatural and we see the way god works uh, and does things one of the important things to bear in mind is also that um, uh, god works together with us we are co-workers with god so there are things that god may call us to do like you know moses go part the red sea okay god you know you part it and god is saying no you part it you take the rod and you keep it in front then i'll part it so what god has done is he has chosen to co-work with us so uh, as i'm saying yes god you are so great uh, there's nothing impossible with you i'm living in that awareness there may be something that god may want me to do like okay go to that person say this or um, can you call this person or can you declare make a declaration of my word or can you lay your hands on someone so i'm co-working with god to see the impossible i can't just sit down and say ah if god wants to do he will do he is great you know he's saying yeah i want to do but you also have to do something okay so that's the way god works he partners with us or we partner with him and co-work with him and then many things happen okay so we're talking about you know engaging the the spiritual realm first understanding is that god is great there is um, a possibility for the impossible to take place because there is a god um and uh, he can he can do something about the situation second is the understanding of the laws of the spiritual world so there are certain laws in the spiritual realm in the natural realm there are laws there is a law of um, gravity there is uh, like whatever all your physics theories you can say heat um, conductivity light these are all the laws it works like that we have to use the laws to um, figure out how to make it work in the same way there is there are laws in the 
spirit realm. So if I want to engage the spirit realm to override the natural realm, I need to understand what are these, these dynamics, what are these laws that operate in the spiritual realm. Uh, one important thing that you know we must bear in mind when we talk about the spiritual laws is covenant. So though we are here on the earth, we are in a covenant with God or we have a promise uh, from God which is unbreakable. So when we admit the natural reality, the spiritual reality is, yeah, but I also have a covenant. God has a covenant with me. So, so many things are applicable. You know, the blessings are applicable. Um, God's help is applicable. So coming from the uh, covenant, right? We know that God is a God who does not change and a God who does not change his covenant. So that in itself is like, you know, um, a law that we understand in the spiritual realm. How does God operate? God operates on the basis of his covenant with us. He has already covenanted with us. You know, I'm um, the God who heals you. I'm the God who provides for you. I'm the God, your peace. I'm the God, your righteousness. Uh, so I go by that law. This is what God said. So this is what he will do. He can't, he can't uh, change himself. He's the immutable God. Okay, so these laws exist. How will God work? There's some predictability. What is that predictability? Based on his covenant. God will operate on the basis of his covenant. He won't operate outside of the covenant. right? So this kind of understanding of the spirit realm gives us great confidence in operating in the spiritual realm. Otherwise, what happens? We may say that, um, uh, oh, what if... I pray for this person and uh, this person becomes uh, uh, even more sick. And, you know, God afflicts them with more and more diseases because I went and prayed. Can it even happen? It can never happen because uh, the covenant of God is different. So he cannot do something which he has not covenanted with us. So when I pray, I can be confident that God will do only what he has said he will do. Okay, now, yes, there could be many reasons for why the healing is not manifesting. That's another story. Uh, but the point is, when we understand God and we understand the covenants of God, that stays in the spirit realm. That's who he is. That's what he does. He won't change it. Okay, His glory, he will not compromise. So when I'm going to minister in the supernatural, I can be very confident because definitely God will not fail me. Isn't it? Uh, that we know he cannot, huh? That that needs so much courage. Uh, that's true, but I think many other things in life need more courage than that because God is the most predictable, isn't it? I mean, think about this. Huh? We pick an airline. We're up in the sky. <laughs> okay, we trust them that they will keep us up in the sky. I think God is much, much more reliable. Even those things are somewhat tricky, but uh, uh, God never goes back on his word. So, uh, you know, we can have confidence. He will never change his covenant. So uh, when I pray, I know, I'm aware, and I know that he will only operate, uh, you know, based on this. Uh, it'll work the same way. So we should not worry that we will get some other results. That's the point. You don't have to worry. God won't change his covenant. Okay? But I need to understand how he operates. Now, that's another area where we have some gaps as people. We are, we're just trying to learn how does he really operate? How does he really minister healing? How does he really minister uh, you know, miracles or give wisdom in a situation? So I have to grow in my understanding uh, to observe. How, how does he do it? Yes, he has a covenant, but how does he operate? Okay. And when we are, we are going, we are getting deeper into that, we become more familiar. But again, you know, God is God. So once he'll do it like this, once he'll do it in another way. And you'll be like, oh, I just when I was thinking, I figured it out. He's doing it so differently. But he's God. We have to be open to that. But still, there is something about the manner in which he works which we can be familiar with so in psalm 103 and verse 7 i would someone like to read this uh, verse please psalm 103 verse 7 
Psalms uh, 103 verse mm. 7. Yes. He made known his ways to Moses, his deeds to the people of Israel. Mm. So he know he made known his ways to Moses and his deeds to the people of Israel. So look at this. There is a difference. The difference is the people of Israel knew God will come. He will speak uh, from out of a cloud. God will, uh, you know, God will provide food. God will protect us. So they knew about the deeds of God. But Moses was way deeper in his relationship with God. So for Moses, it's not so much, uh, what did God do? Tell me what God did. Let's list it out. It was more than that. Why? Why is he doing that? You know, how is he doing that? So his ways, why? Why is God protecting the people? And, you know, um, why is God taking them to the promised land? So there are all these deeper things that Moses was able to understand. He was even able to understand how God might feel, you know, when the people uh, were disobedient to God and they just had a heart of unbelief. God is speaking so much to them. He's telling them again and again. He's showing his miracles. But stiff-necked people, you know, very hard heart. Uh, and... Um, Moses was able to predict, oh, God's angry with these people. Okay, let me go and negotiate, God, please. What will the others say if you, if you punish them? How does he know? How does Moses know? How does he understand God? He knows the ways of God. Much more than God can do this, God can do that. Yeah, that anybody can tell. But why? What is his nature? Okay, um, how does he respond? in situations, circumstances, how does he operate, how does he work. So if you want to just make this simpler, Moses went for God's heart. So to know the ways of God is to know God's heart. What would he want to do now? How would he want to show his glory? Or how would he want to minister to this person? So then what happens, it's so much easier. Uh, to work in our relationship with God, to co-work with God and partner with God. Okay, So these are things that we must understand when we talk about the spirit realm and um, the natural realm. Understanding God, who he is, that he's above and beyond our natural realm and that uh, he operates out of his covenant. And, um, you know, the fact that... Um, uh, uh, you know, God's ways uh, are something that will help us know what he might want to do. These are things that will really free us and give us the confidence to step out okay, uh, more into the supernatural realm. Now, a few spiritual dynamics are also helpful for us to know. Um, like it, you could even put this as the laws that exist in the spirit realm. So uh, when you look at things like faith, the power of faith, there is a law in operation. So if we move by faith, you know, if anyone has faith in his heart, he can speak to this mountain, uh, you know, and, and uh, it'll be uprooted, it'll be cast into the sea. How is it happening? Because the person is engaging a certain spiritual law, the law of faith. It will work, right? So uh, there are laws. One we said is covenant, but then there are all these laws also that we can work in. So I can, maybe I'm in a crisis situation, but uh, I apply faith, okay? And uh, there is a solution. There is an open door. There is a breakthrough. There is an answer. How, how did it happen? Because yes, my natural circumstance exists, but I'm bringing in the supernatural through my faith. I just had faith in God and I said, God, there's nothing impossible for you. I know the situation looks really difficult, but, you know, I, I by faith, I declare that, you know, you will lead me in triumph and victory in Christ Jesus. So I'm applying a spiritual law and God is able to work. So sometimes you've got to engage through that law. You got it? And that's when we see the answers or results. Or if we don't engage in any of these truths or laws and we just say, yeah, God is a good God. He is a generous God. He will do. That's right. But there are certain laws, principles that I have to start engaging as a co-worker with God. So um, if I don't do anything, then there is no result. But it's not God's fault. It's just that I didn't understand. 
that there are certain laws that I must work with. So faith is a very, very powerful uh, law. And you know, we don't want to talk about this like a uh, uh, formula. In our faith course, we've already said that it is more about relationship. It's not so much about uh, take the law, apply the law, get the results, and go home. It's more than that. But when we begin to operate in faith, right? Uh, like the question that Anand asked, uh, how do we hear from God? Even in faith, we can grow day to day. See the operation of faith in our own lives. Maybe even small little things. Like uh, I'll just give you a really silly example. Parking. Okay, I get very stressed about parking. If I have to go somewhere, I'll be like, oh my goodness. Okay, fine, but do they have parking? Otherwise, you have to go around to find that one parking spot, right? You're like full stressed out. Uh, but nowadays, what I do is I just pray. I believe God. <laughs> I know you're laughing, but it's so important for me. I apply my faith. It's silly. Parking. <laughs> okay, Nina saying, no, it's not silly. Yeah. So something like that, you know, parking or uh, it could be anything else. It's just my day to day. I am applying this law. I need to apply my faith. Okay. Or, uh, I mean, there are so many examples that I can share, but the practice of faith, how is it? Even to reach college on time, I'm like, I do everything that I can to be here on time, but then I do apply my faith. I pray, I say, Lord, I know, I believe you'll take me there 10 minutes before because I have to connect this computer, everything. And I'm also seeing it that, yeah, God helps. So small little things, it it's actually a practice. Faith is like that muscle, right? Which you're exercising for everything. Just start to operate, start to operate, start to exercise. Uh, you may be exercising it for uh, so-called mundane things, but it's the same uh, muscle that will help you for great things also in God. So operation of faith, operation of uh, you know the word, the spoken word, the declaration. We know the power of the word. The Lord, God created the heavens and the earth with the word. Okay, so begin to operate in it. Okay, fine. Uh, this this is meant to work. I have faith that this is meant to work. Start to speak. So I, I try to apply it. Like when I uh, pray over my church, I speak blessings in the name of Jesus. You know, I declare that, uh, you know, God is opening doors. You know what? Testimonies come because we are making the declaration by faith. I'm standing on the truth of God's word that the word works. Even to speak it over ourselves or over our families and say, my home is blessed. We need to put it into practice. God has already taught us and he says, you know, the word is near you, in your heart, in your mouth. Just say it. Just speak it. So engaging the spiritual realm by who God is and by the laws that he has given will start to release or manifest the supernatural in our lives. And so when we are engaging, we start to see, hey, it's working. It happens this, because this is the truth. It can't be anything else. Or praise and worship. You know, we see how there is fullness of joy in God's presence. So what do we do? We start to praise. We start to worship. And after a while, we feel it, isn't it? In our spirit man, in our bodies, we sense it. Why? Because it's there in scripture. These are the laws. These are the principles. So I'm engaging the spirit realm by using the truth of God's word, the laws. So praise, worship. It brings in the peace. The victory that we need or how about obedience the bible says if you obey you, know, you you will see the blessings so you obey once you obey twice you surrender your will once twice and you see how god is being so favorable to you how you know uh, great things are happening then you keep moving further then you obey more so in this way we have to understand what are these things that exist in god's word how does it teach us to co-labor with him start to apply those things. Then what happens? We go from beyond the natural. God can actually come in and do something or prayer, or we can even talk about things like, um, uh, you know, sowing and reaping, like financially or in any other way. We sow into people's lives and then we see in our own lives we are blessed because these laws are meant to work. And 
not just for believers i think even many of these things work for the unbeliever financially stewardship sowing so many things so they are able to utilize it because that's the way god has made it to operate okay so that's our first key to just understand uh, that we are part of two realms and uh, the supernatural realm can override the natural realm and for this at least two main things that we need to understand that god is great and god can do the impossible so we can invite him in our situation and secondly to understand the laws that we must operate out of and i've listed out many things for us you know uh, to know the ways of god and faith and uh, uh, power of declaration praise and worship sowing obedience uh, righteousness these are all things that we can walk in and we will see the supernatural so i think we'll just stop here for now there are more um, aspects to talk about but these two realms but we'll come back to it next week mm, so i want to request someone to lead us in prayer anyone jesus lord uh, we thank you father we thank you for your presence we thank you lord for this time oh lord uh, of uh, teaching oh lord father thank you lord for teaching us oh lord father about the spiritual world oh lord father jesus thank you for teaching us the new things oh lord father lord we pray oh lord father that whatever you have taught us oh lord father help us to start living by applying it into our lives oh lord father help us oh lord father to not to take things very lightly but help us to oh, understand oh lord father whatever we do oh lord father it's all connected oh lord father it's all interlinked and help us oh lord father not to forget your teachings but help us to lord to take them bind them in our hearts oh lord father and walk in your counsel holy spirit god we give you glory and honor in jesus name we pray amen amen amen, amen. thank you thank you prince thank you everyone god bless you have a good weekend and uh, we'll meet again next week